You're listening to Comic Reflections, episode 120. I'm your host, Nicholas Prom, And I'm Jeff Barnhart, the cyborg with a kryptonite heart. <laughs> <laughs> Comic Reflections is brought to you by Rhymes with Geek. You can check out our show, plus plenty of other cool podcasts like Superhero Speak, the all-new Anti-Fanboy, and Feeded Comics at rhymeswithgeek.com. And if you like our show, please subscribe to us on either iTunes or Stitcher. So, Jeff, the first comic we've got to talk about today is Superman number 310, and the story is called The Man with the Kryptonite Heart, written by Martin Pasco, uh, penciled by Kurt Swan, and inked by Tex Blysdell. Yeah. Nice splash page. We've got some goobers breaking into the star uh, lab. It's Agents of Skull. Yeah. There are no ordinary goobers, as you <laughs> like to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, Star Lab must be broken into more than any place in history. <laughs> okay, y'all call it the Stop and Rob Lab. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so the Superman gets comes and he takes a sign and bashes him with the sign and wraps him up in you know the Star Lab sign. Yeah. And this uh, guy comes out. Hey, Superman. Um, thanks for coming by. And he's a civilian who works at Star Lab. Right. And then. Um, one of the crooks um, accidentally gets in the way of falling girders and dies. Oh, man. Or it looks like he's about dead. Uh-huh. And that takes off Superman because he doesn't want to kill anybody. Right. But if somebody just walks into the way, it's not like Superman did it. Yeah. But it's kind of... Yeah. There's some ambiguity there. Right. So... He's a tender soul on yeah. Man of Steel. <laughs> Ooh. I like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So... Alright, okay, so he captures him, the, the guy got hit, is going to the hospital, and let's see, Clark goes out back to um, the Galaxy building, oh, I like the Daily Planet building, boo. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, yeah. so here comes Steve Lombard with his big mouth, sticking his nose in the business, doing something stupid. <laughs> He's got this Bon Voyage Lois can for donations or donations, something. Donations, yeah. And, and Clark uh, doesn't know a thing about it. Right. It's like, that's my girlfriend, because yeah. they're dating now. Right. At this time. So he goes, oops. Oh. So Steve is stealing a mini can, which was brand spanking new back then. Sure. To go uh, hunt down a story. Yeah, because he's trying to do a good job. Right. But, of course, he goes, he, he sees these people taking a cask into an ambulance. It looks kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Ambulance, and uh, he follows it and uh, goes to a sports arena and gets captured by a cleaning machine. That one. Like a robot. He gets zapped by this robot and then he gets captured. Yeah. Weird. Mm-hmm. So, cut to something else. Yeah. Um, there... Let's see. I'll put crying out loud. Who is the head of... Um, Star Labs? No. Uh, oh, of GBS? Yeah. Morgan Edge. Morgan Edge. I kind of forget that name. I forget about any name. Okay. He's mad about the minicam. So they figure out, hey, he's he was over at the sports arena. Mm-hmm. So uh, we cut to Clark and Lois having a conversation. He's trying to talk Lois out of leaving Metropolis. And why does she want to leave anyway? Oh... She's ticked off at um, Clark because he's always he's he's either smooth, uh, smooth uh, Mr. Smooth, or he's uh, bumbling off, and she's getting tired of it. Hmm. And she looks like she's in a golden age comic. Oh, right, because uh, the she... hair and all that stuff is very golden agey, and her uh, well, dress the... is is Father Vumi now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. But I like this hairstyle. It's better than her Silver Age look. I just that that short hair. I never, hair, I that, never thought there was. I never that thought short hair that look was like ugh. But you go back to Golden Age. She looked. She had long hair like a woman. I'm not and, even the short hair. It does did not look. It made her look like an old older lady. Yeah, and yeah. like the like you watch the old uh, Adventures of Superman show mm-hmm. in the fifties, and you're like, why is Superman even interested in this lady? She looks like a middle aged like your know, spinster. Yeah. You know, she looks like somebody's mom. Yeah, <laughs> and what we said in high school. That's yeah, like, so yeah. but yeah, this is a very classic, uh, like, nineteen thirties Hollywood movie star hair. Yeah, hair. Baby she black looks, hair. She, yeah, Lois looks her, great. Going through her shoulders. Yeah. yeah. 
So she's got to go to the bathroom. And there is no bathroom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's a phone call, and and Morgan Edge calls Clark, tells him that um, her Steve Lombard is. So Clark uses his heat wave vision and locks um, Lois in the bathroom. He melts the doorknob off and locks her in the bathroom and then bails to go do with some Superman stuff to save yeah. Steve. Which, couldn't he just leave? <laughs> oh, that'd be weird too. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, we'll come back to that. Um, so Superman shows up at the arena to save uh, Steve Lombard, who's like tied to like the football end zone. Yeah, the goalpost. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's... You know how horrible that would be? That's what makes... The, he's He's got his hands, uh, his upper arms around... And his full weight is resting on, like, his, his crowbows in his arms. So that would really hurt. Yeah, That's what was so painful about being crucified. Well, right. You're hanging by your arms for days. It yeah. Took, it usually took days for people to die. Yeah. And so the Romans thought, oh... I'll give him a break and break his legs and it'd kill him and that's better than dying over a couple yeah, of days. Wow. So. so, but anyway, um, and lo and behold, Steve was kidnapped by Metallo. Yeah, well, Corbin, Roger Corbin. God, he looks ugly. He's <laughs> weird. Now, Roger Corbin is the brother of John Corbin, the original Metallo. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, um, oh, we got a cool ad for um, the Haunted Tank. Oh, GI yeah. Combat and yeah. World's Finest. Yeah. And, Very okay. nice. And this was in the late 70s when DC's pulling out their dollar comic line. You get these oversized issues for a dollar, and you get a lot of extra pages and stories. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so... We'll look at some uh, some uh, World's Finest yeah. dollar comics in a few months. So Does Corbin come out of a casket? He's got his casket there. What's up with that? I don't know. It's sort of... It's a cool entrance to make if you're a villain or a vampire. Yeah. So yeah, he does come out of the casket. Cool. Yeah. He looks like... He's weird. But yeah. anyway... He, he looks he, awful. He <laughs> opens up his chest plate and shoots a kryptonite ray at Superman. Mm-hmm. Then smacks him on the head and sends him to, into the floor. Yeah. And then kicks him in the jaw. <laughs> yeah. So with Superman and Metallo's fight is pretty cool. Yeah. This is the new Metallo, right. of course. And uh, Superman kicks the new Metallo in the jaw and punches him one, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> okay, so, um, not a bad fight. Oh, okay, two of these Skull guys sit down and watch the fight. We saw Superman do this when, and, um, uh, oh, Mastermind. Um, was it Mastermind? No. Was, oh, uh, uh, Brainstorm? Brainstorm. Was was monologuing and Superman just sits down and, <laughs> and listens. <laughs> and these guys are doing the great same thing. It's great. Yeah. Now, Skull is a pretty interesting, like, evil crime organization. They're pretty neat. But it's like, boy, Metropolis is really crowded with Skull and Intergang. And uh, I think Cobra would get involved there, too, later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. Okay. So, Superman figures out. And he kind of weakens when, um, when Metallo, Metallo weakens when he's exerting himself. So Superman tries to wear him out, but then Metallo gets this uh, flying something another. Yeah, he's got this cool, uh, I don't know, flying disc that he flies around on, which is neat. Mm-hmm. He's got a skull on it, so you know who. <laughs> yeah, he's working with skull, so that's cool. Yeah. So, all right. So he, Superman finally makes him afraid. And because he couldn't, he's not exerting himself riding around, so he right. makes him afraid and makes him fall, and uh, he gets worn out. And uh, Superman is trying to just get at that kryptonite, so he he's, he's, he's defeated. And right. So he kills himself. Metallo does. Yeah. Yeah. Not Superman, no. Right. Well, this. Is- I don't want, want to be clear. Yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. All right, uh, we got some more a- a- in-house ads for Plop. Oh, this is an ad. Uh, it's it, they're selling off. Uh, s- s- well, back issues that they've kind of like overran the print. Plop was a humor mag that uh, that DC had briefly, 
And uh, Wally Wood did some work on that, I believe. Hmm. But um, yeah, we've got Prez, Strange Sports, Weird Worlds, and uh, the Battle of the Century with Superman versus the Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. So. All right. So, all right. So S Superman. Superman has to clean up, and uh, he gets back. Oh no, I forgot Lois. And Lois, I was in the bathroom for six hours. So she's super pissed. And so, you know, Superman, he beat the Skull Guys and saved Steve Lombard. And, uh, you know, Metallo is taken to the morgue. Then he sits right up in the morgue when he's on the slab. So he's not dead. Yeah. There's, more, there's more to come from Metallo. Oh, there's a run on by the Flash. Um, let's see. What? Okay, next, an immortal from Krypton comes to Earth, and Central City may die as a result. Super shocker with a run on by the Flash. Plague of the Antibiotic biotic Man. Hmm. I don't know why we were even mentioning it, because we're not going to have that issue. It's yeah, no, but it's kind of interesting. That yeah, I always like those man. what's coming next. So. Yeah. So, yeah. So, the next issue we've got to talk about, Jeff, is Superman number one, uh, excuse me, 313. And the story is called, The Only Way You'll Save the Earth is Over My Dead Body. Written by Martin Pasco. Uh, penciled by Kurt Swan and inked by Dan Adkins. Hmm. Okay. We have a world press conference. I'm not sure why. I don't know. How do you have a world press conference? I don't conference? know. <clears throat> at the UN, maybe? No, it's at Central City. Well, okay. Okay, so we have Lois Lane, Steve Lombard, uh, Steve's nephew, Jamie, who is not a jerk like Steve Lombard is. Right. And a stray dog that Jamie found at the hotel. Huh, okay. All of a sudden, people start getting a disease. Big purple dots all, all over their faces. Mm. Although this is not little dots. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and they call it the journalist disease. Which is weird. So as in the previous issue, this has started happening. And Superman was fighting uh, an escapee from the Phantom Zone. The renegade Kryptonian scientist, uh, what's his name? Nam Ek. That's right. And Namek, if you recall, during his experiments, he kind of mutated himself. He's purple, and he's got a horn growing out of the his yeah. head. Because uh, he drank the elixir from this uh, rare uh, Kryptonian animal's horn, I think. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> um, they, He fights Superman, and Superman thinks he killed him by because he knocked him into a volcano eruption. <laughs> wow. Okay, so here we are. Um, Lois gets the uh, journalist disease. It the spots appear on your face, but not on your legs. Hmm. hmm. Weird. All right. So Namek uh, joins forces with the with the spacecraft pilot Amalek. Yeah. The real culprit behind the scenes, and he looks like a dirty hippie. So <laughs> you know he's evil. Hmm. Alright, so um, Amalek defeats Supergirl and holds a star cannon um, at her head. And, uh, let's see. So Namek is imprisoned in this crystal, and yeah. Superman is taking him to uh, to be near the folks who are sick because Namek kind of radiates this like, healing kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's some kind of horn. Yeah, I forget what the animal it is, but mm -hmm. something from Krypton. Yeah. Um, so he's about to. So he's going to shoot. Um, Amalek is going to shoot Supergirl. Mm -hmm. ah, and what Amalek wants to do is destroy Superman's soul by having him kill somebody. Because when Superman thought he had killed Namek, God, these names, um, <laughs> he was prostrate with grief. Uh, you're shot or reduced to a stupid, snilling wretch, says Amalak. Ha. Oh, um, let's see. So, he, Amalak wants to shoot Supergirl with the star cannon, which is a pistol with the barrel shaped like a star. Lame. <laughs> oh, God, it's... I know. Is it a bedazzler? That's what it looks like. Yeah. You know, here let me put some uh, some sequins on the back of your jacket. So, um, so Amalek pulls the trigger and goes click, and Supergirl gets a smirk on her face. She breaks the chains and starts kicking butt. Yeah, punches him right in the face. Wham! Yeah, 
And look, Supergirl's wearing hot pants. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> I approve. Because <laughs> she's a good time girl, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Alright, so... Alright, um... He's got a horn of a Kryptonian animal named called the Rondor. That's right, the Rondor. So anyway, Superman took uh, Namek in, in this imprisoned crystal or whatever and put him in the area where the people with journalists' disease are uh, in quarantine. And hopefully he will radiate some healing powers from uh, from the Rondor horn mm -hmm. that he's grown or whatever. So. Okay. All right. Um, Supergirl ties up Amalek, who gets up, and he, he puts on this... Ne energy nexus, which is impenetrable to everybody. Hmm, similar to Brainiac's force field. Yeah, and he gets a electro surrogate. <laughs> God. So if there's an a be an energy that that's made of pure uh, an, an, a being made of pure energy that it fights for Amalek, and so he's fighting Supergirl. And Supergirl's getting her butt kicked. Yeah, but she does a double punch. I don't know what that's called. You, you, put, you put your fingers together and smack somebody, just like Captain Kirk. Is that a haymaker? A haymaker is just a wide. Oh, well, I can't remember what that's called. When you put your your you, you lock your fingers together and do that punch, but yeah, but I he, remember Kirk used to do that a lot. Hit people in the back with that. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Amalek is here. He is monologuing. I love that phrase because it's so true. Yeah, and it's it it comes from the movie The Incredibles. Yeah, and but yeah, we have super villains. They've got you tied up or captured, and then they have to tell you everything. You know, mm -hmm. uh, or they they think they've won, and it's time to tell you like their friggin' life mm -hmm. story. So yeah, yeah. And uh, so Amalek's got this plan, but Superman can only win if he kills somebody. Ha ha! It says Amalek. Or last I'm alive. Mm -hmm. oh. So the cosmic energy has been building up in the star cannon and it blows up everything. Huh. Is Supergirl dead? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, back on Earth. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Alright, Clark talks to Jamie and his mutt. And uh what's going on with this? And more people get the uh, disease. Yeah. Alright. So Clark has to, oh, I gotta get out of here. That's Superman. So he makes the little dog pretend like he bit him. And, um, let's see. And he takes his watch. And Superman uses just a little tiny burst of heat vision to, like, burn the dog's tail so it'll, like, seem aggressive or no, something. Well, let go, because he's yeah. got a grip on him. Yeah. And then the dog turns into this guy who fights Superman. Yeah. And, um, and it's ugly, too. He looks cool, though. Um, I don't know. I, I disagree. <laughs> okay. Uh, he, he looks like old, the um, creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, mixed with Baron Blood from remember Baron Blood the yeah, vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, who can forget Baron Blood? Man, never forget. Yeah, name is Javik. Javik serves as master, says the creature. Yeah. So I think they, Javik looks cool. So okay, well, um, he's giving a good fight. Yeah. <clears throat> he right wraps up, and ties up Superman, and then runs away. Yeah. <laughs> All right then. Superman go um, follows him, and then here's Supergirl, and, um, and she punches Superman right in the face. Why? It's a he, she's the goober. So, what? Um, the bad guy. Oh, was it just? Oh, that's right. He was. It was just Javik in disguise. Yeah. So Javik has some shape changing abilities. Mm-hmm. All right, and then Superman, the dog took his watch, which was started the whole dang thing, mm -hmm. and then. Superman sees his watch and says, hey, wait a minute. The dog was all around. The dog is to blame for everything. Mm -hmm. All right. And so he picks up Jevik and he's about to smash him. And he turns, and Jevik turns into a dog. And here comes Jamie and says, hey, you can't slant and punch my dog. <laughs> it does look bad, doesn't it? Yeah, so, it does. Ah. Almost as bad as when uh, 
Lois made the Superman wear the baby's bonnet to humiliate him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I think it's probably one of those crimes that nobody will ever... Like, Michael Vick, no one's ever going to forgive him. What did he do? He had dog fighting. Oh, and, okay. And, um, I don't know. Rarely yeah, super, see it, if, but if Superman punched a dog to death, yeah, that would look bad forever. Yeah. So, anyway... Oh man, secret so um, we got a in a house there for a secret society of supervillains. Remember when we read those issues? You yeah, loved that I did, series. Yeah, that's Grog, isn't it? Yeah, Gorilla Grod and, and Grog. Odd. Okay, um, Grog is a drink, an alcoholic drink. Yes, Freedom Fighters. Yeah, and uh, Eternal New Gods. We've read those too, haven't we? Yeah. Okay, so all right, um, so Amalek talks to Jerbeck. Uh, that um, the only way you'll save the Earth, Superman, is over my dead body. <laughs> so how's Superman going to get out of this? What a pickle for yeah. the Man of Steel. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we have the next issue, so let's see. All right. It's um, Superman number 314, and the story is called, Before This Night Is Over, Superman Will Kill. Written by Martin Pascoe. Penciled by Kurt Swan and inked by Dan Adkins. Mm -hmm. um, in the Golden Age, does Superman kill? I don't yeah, think he, yeah. He Early did. on, I remember. I've read. Uh, I haven't read the specific story, but I've heard of him like, you know, someone shooting at him with a Tommy gun and then throwing the guy in front of the bullets he just fired. You know, <laughs> that's super cool. Yeah, um, oh. I think early on in the Golden Age, mm -hmm. Superman and Batman definitely killed people mm -hmm. and then they kind of cleaned it up and for the silver age oh and even before the silver really? age within the golden age they kind of softened that up oh, okay. um and then of course the comics code happened and then they really um cleaned so it now up it's, it's it's like Isaac guy's most third laws of robotics it's a convention where you can have stories revolve around it's this law that superman Self-imposed, I guess. Yeah. Um, will not kill. Yeah. And same thing with Batman. And um, Batman doesn't kill. No. No, but in er, his early stories in the Golden Age, yeah. absolutely he killed people. Mm -hmm. Broken people's necks. He used to shoot people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they did serve to be shot, I bet. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and so now they've kind of made it as sort of a rule as the, they don't kill or, or it's uh, extremely rare, you know. Um, <clears throat> and so on, that kind of becomes the de rigueur for superheroes in general that, no, we don't do that. Mm. Um, when in reality, you know, you would probably kill somebody sometimes. I killed a Joker. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know, or just like, think about it. If you're a superhero just in general, sometimes people are going to die in your super battles. Yeah. You know, so. Oh, man, they can die in your sleep, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you have a, a nightmare and. Kill your wife, <laughs> some of that. So, sure. Um, yeah. What's, okay. What's so great about it? It, it makes, uh, from the comic book uh, writer's uh, standpoint, hey, these guys can come back again if people like the villain. Sure. If you kill them, they can't. Oh, you got to think of some. Well, yeah. I mean, the Joker was killed in his very first story, and then mm -hmm. they had to find a way for. Oh, he didn't die or didn't you know whatever, because mm -hmm. he was such a great villain. Like, don't waste him. Right. You know, so... But anyway. Things. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Apparently... Okay. Apparently the dog is a clin from the planet Tiburon. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. We, we get a recap of what happened last time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a kid with a... Uh, with, with, with the disease and... Gack. <laughs> oh, no, I love it. I don't know what it means. It's just a sound effect, like like throwing know, up, or but, maybe. But yeah, but he's not throwing up. He's just sick. <laughs> I don't know, man. Okay. Hmm. So yeah. All right. So okay, the clan of the planet Tiburon. It looks like a mix between a monkey and an elephant and a and who wears glasses. <laughs> yeah. They look like four eyes. Yeah. The thing is, they when they are they live when they're and they're big. Then they go into a death state where they're teeny tiny. Mm -hmm. So 
the creature is in the teeny tiny um, phase now, so yeah. Superman can kill it. Yeah, but also Amalak is somehow able to uh, control it at this point mm -hmm. and, and stuff. But um, And then it reverts back to its alive uh, state or whatever, yeah. and it becomes huge and sends Superman and goes on a rampage and Superman has to fight it. And it l looks ridiculous, but yeah. cool at the same time. Yeah, I would say that. Mm-hmm. It's very um, Silver Age DC monsters. Yeah, and I mean this is still the bron this is the Bronze Age, but um, but yeah, it, it it harkens back to sixties, fifties uh, and sixties giant monster stuff. Yeah. So. All right. Um, all right. The monster goes and steals hamburgers, and then he and then knocks Superman into a big M from McDonald's. Yeah, or it's McTavish's, but it's in, in oh, DC. It? Yeah. Because they're not, they can't use, say McDonald's. Well, they say you deserve a break today. Okay, but yeah. that's not... Right. Just because okay, that was... Okay, okay. okay, I thought it was like McDonald's right next to McTavish's, but now, all right, I think you're right. So, so he's using the golden arches and whacking the monster with it. Yeah. Like, it's... It's, a, it's probably made out of aluminum or something. I don't know why Superman uses other things to hit things with, or anyone with super strength. When you could just punch it. Yeah, he's got a super strong fist. What else do you want? Right. Cool house ad for a showcase uh, with the, the all-new Doom Patrol. Mm-hmm. So. Doom Patrol, R.I.P. Because hmm. yeah. the original Doom Patrol died. Oh, look at this. You could be in the Superman movie. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because remember Superman the movie hadn't come out yet. Yeah. That's a great film. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. Okay, so he wraps up the monster, and then he goes into, oh, i got to figure this out. So he goes to the Justice League satellite. Yeah. And this um, Green Lantern and... The Flash are there and incapacitated. Right. Are they dead? Are they, Something. I'm not sure. I don't think they're dead. But, um, so Amalak is there on the satellite, and he's messing around with, in the trophy room. He's, uh, we see Amazo, the android, in, under glass. Mm -hmm. And, um, Amalak uses uh, Dr. Light's something ray, and he's got the keys, um, I don't know. weapon. Yeah, I don't, and the keys, radiation, like, so, yeah. I guess it's a villain, the key. I don't know him. You... We talked about the key, and you were like, "He said you had the worst headdress ever." Oh, I don't remember. Well, hmm. it was a while ago. We did a Justice League block like last year. Mm -hmm. You know, where we uh, talked about them pretty extensively, but whatever. Yeah. Okay, you get zapped by the key. <laughs> God, what a the radiation weapon. rod. <laughs> uh, and Superman, Superman just laughs it off. Yeah. And then, Amalek's got this amulet around his neck <laughs> that he, you know, it's a tuning um, device. Yeah. And and it makes, um, it stones out Superman. He's having a bad trip. <laughs> and he, he can't see where he's, um, he can't see to punch out the hippie, <laughs> Amalek. <laughs> but he can hear him, so he hits, he hits it anyway. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, this is one of those um, kind of book things I love. And it, it's a little box with a hand coming out of it. It's it's a balloon, uh -huh. but it says, "Watch out, Superman! Your fist is heading for the Kanjar Gamma Gong." <sighs> oh, Kanjar Rose Gamma Gong. Oh yeah, Kanjar Rose. Okay, he was another uh, classic Justice League villain. Okay, nice. Yeah. I like how they make reference to these old villains. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and uh, the Gamma Gong knocks out Amalak. Yeah, and then Superman throws the Javak into space. Yeah. Which is cool. And he makes some tranquilizer because he figured out that people, when people get angry, they get the disease. Oh, when they get angry? So, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. And uh, so he throws out the, the monster. And... Um, he comes back to Amalak and says, Hey, you killed me because I'm committing suicide. Yeah. But, um... No, no, okay. He says, you killed me, I'm dying. And then Superman says, Hey, you uh, trained an alien death ray on yourself. So, 
it wasn't me, it was you. Yeah. And so Amalek like, dies a loser. <laughs> yeah. And then um, uh, turns out Green Lantern and the Flash are fine, and Supergirl is too. Yeah. All right. Pretty. Okay. Um, oh, epilogue. Yeah, this is the big one. So Clark goes to see Lois. She's recovering from the disease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking nice in her um, hospital bed. Mm -hmm. Clark proposes to her. Yeah. And she said, I will say yes, but only if you tell me that you're a Superman. And he refuses to do this. Okay, let's talk about this. Okay. How would that work? How would what work? I mean, how many, um, being your Superman, you're married to a woman who cannot know that you're Superman. I mean, no, it's have, just... you have to be on your guard 24 hours a day. Well, yeah. Where would you put your super suit? <laughs> well, yeah, and it, it creates a host of problems. Um, but he could just tell her, and why couldn't they just live in the fortress of solitude? Right, yeah. Because then she'd be safe. Mm -hmm. And why does it... Secret identities are stupid. They're stupid. Uh, I like them. It's kind of, especially for Superman, because he has to. They're more fun when he was a reporter. It, it, yeah. It's just stupid when he's a he's a newscaster, not mm. just a TV reporter, a newscaster. Right. Oh, gotta go now. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Um. That, that's just. Yeah. And then, then him saying that he's not Superman. Lois Lane says, oh, then you're really not Superman. So I wouldn't marry you anyway. <laughs> so, right. Uh, when, you know she get, when did she get married? Um, they got married... In the 80s? Other than, other than imaginary stories in right. the Silver Age, um, they got married post-crisis um, in the 90s. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Huh. <clears throat> Before or after he dies? After. Yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. So, all right. Well, the last comic we got to talk about today. Uh, it's another uh, dose of Space Adventures from Charlton. It's Space Adventures number forty-seven, and um, the lead story is called "Man or Pseudo Man," written by Joe Gill with art by Rock Mastrosario. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, we're in the future, because it's some kind of weird tribunal. <laughs> yeah. But the guy's got a walrus mustache. Of course. <laughs> and a wooden gavel. So how far in the future can that be? I don't know. All right. This guy is sent to a uh, penal colony, colony on the asteroid, Saurus 5. Mm-hmm. Or it might be Saurus B. I don't know. But I think it's Saurus 5. I think it has 5. We're using right. Roman numerals, so... Yeah, I anyway. so. So... Alright, so he's being taken up in the, in the um, prison spaceship, and he's talking to one of the guys, and he's telling a story. He invents robots, and he was getting a robot exactly like a human being, and that was forbidden. Mm. But he says, I didn't do it. So, but we find out that he really tried to do it. Hmm. So he goes into an, the asteroid, and he's left by himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and he orders boxes, and they send this evil scientist maniac. And they <laughs> give him oh, boxes full of electronic gizmos. Yeah, what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, what's he going to do with that? Gee, build more robots, duh. Yeah. So... I'm surprised he didn't like build a robot army and like overthrow the penal colony planet. That'd be cool, man. Uh, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. There's a comic book story for you. Indeed. Okay. Oh man, I love these ads. A giant ten foot inflatable boa constrictor. Man, that'd be cool. <laughs> All right. So, um, so he makes a robot look exactly like himself. Okay. So he's going to leave the robot here. Or I don't. Wait, what was his plan? He was going to. Um, was he going to send the robot to Earth, or is he to to overthrow the Earth and take over with robots? No, he's going to have the robot stay. He's going to get in the, the spaceship, and no one will know he's missing because there is a robot mm, until it's okay. too late. 
So this ship, uh, supply ship comes. Hey, he's got a reprieve. Because Justice Department in the future, as of now, is stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> <sighs> okay. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, robots are made to aid all mankind, not one man. <laughs> Says the robot to this master. <laughs> yeah. And so the robot has got has become sentient. And has morals and stuff. Right. So, More so than the is maker. So they battle. And one of them, we don't know which, gets on the spaceship to back to Earth. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of ambiguous. And who is the one that goes? The man or the pseudo man? Yeah. Big but, question. Well, the man wore, was wearing um, blue pants in the fight, and the guy getting on the spaceship has blue pants mm. and a red shirt. But I guess a robot could have undressed him. Yeah. He's kind of pervy. But, oh. Well, you know, robots. Robots these days. Mm -hmm. So. Hey. So, um. Okay, so the next story is called One More Moon, and it was written by Joe Gill, with art by, eh, the meh, Bill Malno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, there's something about his art that I like, even though I recognize it's pretty lousy. Man, this moon is ugly. God, it, it looks like a zebra moon or something, yeah. yellow, and it just, uh All right. So the spaceship is coming to this moon. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to blow it up, but he wants to be this guy. Um, who is it? I don't know. Wants to be captured. He's blonde. He's got a granite jaw. Okay. All right. Um, he's captured. So, what is going on here? Man, they, they all kind of... Hmm. Let's see. So, they get... Alright, so they're going to try to take over the world. Aliens. He aliens. means aliens. You didn't mention that. I'm part. sorry. They, they got a butt head and a, <laughs> and a pig face. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, but it's true. They, their heads totally look like butts. Butts with pig noses. Mm -hmm. God, I could have drawn this better. Bill Molno sucks. Yeah. So, anyway. Oh, and they have, looks like they have glasses on. Yeah. Something. Okay. So. Um, so, they're going to... Um, this moon is above the earth, and they're going to, um, they're messing around with the weather. Uh-huh. And I guess we have gamma guns. Sure. And start shooting the gamma guns at them. And then um, the guy, um, our captain, escapes and starts beating up guys with his fist. Okay. <laughs> Alien guys. Yeah. Alien butthead faces with his fists. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, okay. One of the guys on the good guy ship has this. What is it called? It's um. Ah, oh, for crying out loud! <laughs> it's some goofball. It's um. Oh, electro. Okay, insulator spray. Uh huh. So they spray the in insulation. You know, it's an insulator spray, and the aliens' electric guns don't work against them. Okay. So they escape, and the alien <laughs> says, "Well, oh, man, we can't even fight one, three guys. We can't defeat this world, so we'll just leave." And that's it. Wow. <laughs> so, so the next right. story in this book is called "War's End." Um, Joe Gill wrote this one also, uh, and uh, art by uh, Rock Monster Serial. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're on the moon. Oh, um, now there's a there's a war been going on for a long time. Years between, and years. between the U.S. in outer space against the commies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's this one guy they figure out who wants the war. To, everyone else wants it to end. Um, I guess commies like living too. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right um, let's see what's going. All right. So somebody um, they keep sending these spaceships to blow up. Our moon base, uh -huh. and finally one of them does, and comes back, and is great as a hero, and uh, they say, and he he tells them, uh -huh. I have to speak to the leader. I cannot tell anybody else this super awesome information. Okay. So they send him to the leader. Okay. So what they do is uh, he. Talks to him and he uses his eyes to hypnotize the leader, and the leader surrenders. The end. Man. 
Wow, so that was dramatic. on the edge of my seat. <laughs> Man, yeah. not. Um, so, and the the last story in this book is called "The Beast of Bardo," which is kind of interesting and not that much. But it's written by Joe Gill with art by Rock Monster Serial. This could have been really, really good. And could have been. It, it, there's a good story in here, and it's gone. Yeah. And, hey, look, it's a bouncing boy. Hey, there is a guy that does look like uh, our pal Chuck Tane from the uh, Legion of Superheroes. So, I don't know it's how you remember all these names. Huh? But if I meet somebody 15 minutes later, I forget their name. But well, you remember these bouncing boys' real name? <laughs> it's because I read comic books. I and did, I, well, I don't I, as much anymore, but I can't even remember them. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I know Clark Kent for crying out loud. I know. I just, you know what? I file this away for details to remember, and it's that's what happens. I forget yeah. things sometimes, though. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so this planet Bardo. Um, I couldn't remember George Tuska last week, a couple no. weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Um, all right, there's a, a base, a colony base on Bardo. They're sending another group of people, and they're a bunch of big, beefy guys. Okay. Even the women are big, beefy guys. <laughs> so, okay. And they had this one guy, Harry Brown, who's just a small, insignificant fellow, shy and quiet. Hmm. Much like our comic book readers. <laughs> okay. And all the other people are making fun of them. How'd they get on here? Right. That's too late now. So. So. All right, so they land, and the people are dead. So it's like um, the so Walter Raleigh's colony in North Carolina, which yeah. is where I'm from, and Croatan, because they leave a message, because it's all mysterious, mm -hmm. and no idea where they are. Instead of Croton, they, they leave a message, beware beast dash food. So, so which is as, as confusing as Croton. Mm. So they get it, uh, they, they choose this leader. He seems like an okay guy. Cro Crotoan. Crotoan? Is that yeah. how you pronounce it? Yeah. Uh, you know, I've never heard anybody pronounce it. Yeah. I've always read it. I'm like, Croatan? What? Oh, Croton. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be darned. All yeah. this time. Yeah. I'm 52 years old. I forgot. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know how to say that. It's okay. Hmm. I'm okay. here to help you, Chad. It's supposedly, you know, <laughs> it's supposedly a, um Indian tribe. And, um, and then they're an Indian tribe with um, tribesmen who are blonde hair and blue eyed. Yeah, because so, the, the colonists went native. That's what mm -hmm. happened. So. Okay. Um, okay, so the leader comes to Brown because Brown is not eating any food except for what they brought with him. Sure. And here, um, all the big guys are still angry at Brown. But he stops um, and he... he the fight coming, and then, then he stops the fight, and um, here comes this big monster. They they um, they use fire. I guess fire works on most monsters. Good thing it doesn't breathe fire. Then they'd be out of luck. Right. Uh, apparently, they didn't bring any weapons. Well, that wasn't smart of them. Mm -hmm. So Troy, who's a captain of them, he decides, oh, there's a substance in this earth. Oh, he find. Harry Brown tells Troy there's a substance in the earth that's making the food poisonous. Hmm. So they figure out how to get the poison out. And now we see a statue to Everett Troy, um, leader and savior of the first colony. Hmm. And no one mentions Harry Brown. He really did it. So. Of course. Hmm. I'm sure that's like a subtle kind of like uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. dig. Yeah, this could have been a really good... I like the story. It's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and maybe fleshed out. It could have been the whole um, comic book. Yeah. Um, and the people should have had more of a personalities, but the plot is really, really good. Yeah. I think it's a great, like, storyboard for, like, uh, take this and and broaden, expand mm -hmm. it, uh, and then you can have something Double that's... the size or the yeah. length of it, and you yeah. got something good there. You know, and, you know, it's like Charlton was, like, the little company that couldn't, you know... <laughs> Um, but could have, and uh, it's interesting. Sometimes there's some really wonderful Charlton stuff, but oftentimes it's just 
so much mediocrity. Yeah, that's sad too. Yeah. It doesn't have to be mediocre. No, it doesn't. Mm. So they were definitely not reinventing the wheel most of the time with comics. Uh, <sighs> their action hero period was really great. Yeah. Yeah, when we read some of that. Sad. Yeah, no. uh, it's sad when something good is bad. and Or when something and, could be good and just that potential right. is just doesn't fulfill. It's isn't fulfilled. A, yeah, it's interesting when a movie is bad and you can't put your finger on it. What yeah. went wrong? And, yeah. and, and you don't know. Everything seems good, but there's something wrong with it. And yeah, and that's what I guess criticism, good criticism, does is find out what's wrong with something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you make a bad film? How do you spend a hundred million dollars and make a bad movie? I don't understand that. Because you make it based on focus groups, not on art. Right. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anything you want to sign off? We defy you to tune in next week uh, for another thrill-packed episode. Yay! Mm -hmm.